Morning. Using the, the UNESCO definitions of learning, I want to just explore the difference between three intentional classifications of learning and one that is unintentional. So let's deal with the unintentional one first, which is either defined as unintentional or accidental learning. Uh, one might be walking around a city and spot that a particular property was once lived in by Charles Darwin, and that's incidental. You had no intention of learning it, you just observed something and you learned something as a result. So that's incidental learning, accidental learning. The other three categories are all intentional learning, and those three classifications are informal, non-formal, and formal learning. So let's start with formal learning. Formal learning is generally acknowledged as being uh, either compulsory, as in up to 16, 18, depending on the, the national conditions, um, there is normally compulsory education and provision of formalised education in the tertiary sector, so polytechnics, uh, institutes of technology, universities and so on. So anything that has a an award, a recognised award at the end, normally attracting credit, and there is clearly a very defined syllabus or, or curriculum. So that's formal education, formal learning. Where it becomes slightly more moot, becomes more debatable, is the boundaries then between that form of formal learning and non-formal learning. Non-formal learning is still intentional, the learner still intends to learn, and they are normally embarked on some form of curriculum or syllabus, although generally not, not for credit, um, generally not transferable between institutions and so on. So things like um, learning to drive, learning to swim, those kinds of skills that are very much defined as non-formal education. There is a curriculum, there is a progression, there is someone teaching, there is normally some collaboration with others, but that's non-formal learning. And the boundaries between those is clearly uh, somewhat debatable. And certainly in the, in, the, in the realm of the micro-credits and the MOOCs, uh, that, that kind of basically blurs the boundaries between non-formal and formal. What becomes very unclear is the distinction then between intentional learning, that is informal, and non-formal. So informal learning, the distinction between those two, generally is determined by the degree of curriculum that is present. So if there is an organised structure to the learning, it would generally be seen as non-formal. If there is no organised structure to learning, if one is literally just pursuing one's own interests, jumping from one source to another, building a curriculum as one goes, as one develops the learning, that would generally be informal learning. So just to use the example of the Darwin House, for example, if one was uh, expected to identify architecture as an architecture student or one was a history graduate and one was identifying where Darwin lived and you were pacing the streets um, in order to identify that property, that would be part of a formal learning process. If you were part of a historical association that had organised walks around the city, that would probably be non-formal learning. If, on the other hand, you happened to be interested in um, evolution and you were surfing the internet and you were reading articles, reading journal articles, watching YouTube videos, and you found out that, that there was a property that uh, Darwin had lived in and you visited it, that would be informal learning. There is no lack of intention in informal learning. Informal learning is still a deliberate act on the part of the learner. What distinguishes it from non-formal and formal learning is the lack of any organised structure to the knowledge, any organised curriculum. So those are the four categories that are defined by UNESCO. Three are intentional, one is unintentional, and the boundaries between the three intentional learning modes is defined by the degree of curriculum intent and the organisation of knowledge that's accessed.